Hi there, Andrew here. We're putting feelers out for the idea of sponsors for the show. We have grown to a sizable audience of legal professionals, and we'd love to find a way to get the resources to continue to grow the show and spend more time on it. This might take the form of more longer form, maximum minimum competence episodes, or longer daily episodes, or maybe short interviews. We've had a couple of inquiries regarding sponsorship, but want to get feedback from all of you, the listeners. If you have thoughts or have a sponsor in mind that you think would be a good fit, shoot me an email at andrew at leahy.org. We're still very much in the brainstorming stage, so all ideas are good ideas. So ends the housekeeping segment. Let's get to the show. Hello and welcome to the Minimum Competence episode for Monday, March 20th, 2023. I'm your host for today, Gina Leahy, a real estate and finance attorney from Philadelphia. In today's episode, we have states trying to put their kids to work, SVB's parent company cut off from SVB bank records, and updates and expectation management for the potential Trump arrest. Let's trade Mar-a-Lago for Behind a Barzo and explore our defense options in today's legal news. Several U.S. states are considering relaxing child labor laws, a move that is drawing criticism from worker advocates and federal officials. The proposals range from eliminating work permit requirements for people under 16 to letting teenage apprentices work in off-limits workplaces, such as factories. The bills are supported by business groups who argue that the measures could help employers struggling to hire enough workers. The legislative movement coincides with the discovery of companies illegally employing children, including more than 100 children hired to clean meatpacking plants late at night using caustic chemicals in eight states. Several proposed state measures could run afoul of stricter federal protections under the Fair Labor Standards Act. By way of very brief background, The Fair Labor Standards Act is a federal labor law that sets wage, hours, and safety requirements for individuals under the age of 18 working in jobs covered by the statute. The rules vary depending upon the particular age of the minor and the particular job involved. As a general rule, the act sets 14-year-olds as the minimum age for any employment and limits the number of hours worked by minors under the age of 16. SVB Financial, the parent company of Silicon Valley Bank, has lost access to its financial records after the bank was placed into receivership by the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation. The bank is exploring options, including a potential bankruptcy sale, for its venture capital and investment banking businesses, which were not included in the FDIC's takeover. However, its Chapter 11 bankruptcy has gotten off to a challenging start due to a breakdown in cooperation with the bridge bank set up to take over SVB's business. SVB Financial has no employees of its own, and the new bank's employees cut off access to a substantial portion of SVB's financials, books, records, files, electronic systems, and key employees. SVB Financial filed for bankruptcy protection on Friday, about a week after California banking regulators closed Silicon Valley Bank. The FDIC is attempting to sell SVB and may seek a breakup of the failed lender. If you're interested in learning more about the banking industry and how money is made, check out our episode of Maximum Minimum Competence released on Saturday. A key witness, Robert Costello, may challenge the claims made by Michael Cohen, former President Donald Trump's former lawyer, before a grand jury decides whether to charge Trump over hush money paid to Stormy Daniels. The Manhattan District Attorney's Office has invited Trump to testify before the grand jury, but he declined the offer. The district attorney's office has been investigating a $130,000 hush payment made by Cohen to Stormy Daniels during the 2016 presidential campaign. Costello's testimony is expected to focus on the payment to Daniels and how it came about. Trump has denied the affair with Daniels and called the investigation a political persecution. If Trump were indicted, any trial could still be more than a year away, possibly coinciding with the final months of the 2024 presidential campaign. If charged, Trump would become the first former U.S. president to face criminal prosecution. The average criminal case in New York takes more than a year to move from indictment to trial, and Trump's case is far from average. Trump would likely pursue other avenues, some of which could present thorny legal issues that take time to resolve, such as challenging whether the statute of limitations, five years in this instance, should have run out. 
Under New York law, the statute of limitations may be extended if the defendant has been out of state, but Trump may argue that serving as U.S. president should not apply. It is worth noting, were Trump to be elected in 2024, he would not hold the power to pardon himself of state charges, only federal. Trump's lawyers could also challenge whether the payment violated state campaign finance law. Using state election law to elevate a false business record could charge as an untested legal theory, experts said. In the near term, any indictment would require Trump to travel to the district attorney's office in downtown New York to surrender. In white-collar cases, the defendant's lawyers and prosecutors typically agree on a time and date rather than arresting the person at home. Trump would have his fingerprints and mugshot taken and would appear for arraignment in court. He would likely be released on his own recognizance and allowed to return home. So those hoping to see Trump take a perp walk will likely be disappointed. Thanks so much for listening to Minimum Competence, your daily news podcast for lawyers. If you're looking for more than Minimum Competence, links to further reading on all of the topics touched on today are in our show notes. If you have any questions or story suggestions, find us on Mastodon on the esq.social instance. I'm at Gina and my co-host Andrew is at Andrew. Reviews go a long way towards helping new listeners to find our show. If you have a moment and can leave a rating or review on your podcast player, we'd appreciate it. And if you know someone that may be interested in a story we cover, consider sending them the episode. Minimum Competence is part of the Esquire Cast Network of Podcasts and is available at minimumcomp.com. We'll see you back here tomorrow. And until then, remember, every time a bell rings, a minimum gets its competence.